Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben, your humble host at your favorite website to learn how to play banjo, guitar, and mandolin. This is a monster, a beast of a lesson today. This is one of my favorite hymns. And as you just heard, I, I played a duet with mandolin. Last week I taught mandolin. This week I'm teaching guitar. Let me tell you why this is such a beast of a lesson. Because I'm not just teaching the solos, I'm also teaching the backup. That means the slow finger style backup for the slow mandolin solo as well as the real fast Celtic style rhythm. We're gonna cover all that. So if you're watching here on Facebook or YouTube, here in a minute, I'll ask you to go over to the website, banjobenclark.com, where you can view the 40 plus minute video lesson on this. As well as you know, instructing it, I also have videos where I play it all the way through slowly for you, okay, so that you can practice along. I've got the, the PDF. Uh, tab over there, which is three pages long, written exactly as I played it. I also have the TEF file, which is a really cool tool. You can download a free player called the TEF View Player, and I've got a video there on the site showing how to do it. And your computer will play this tab for you, and you can control the tempo, all kinds of stuff. And I've got TEF files there with both the mandolin and guitar part, okay? So you can mute the guitar part and play along with the mandolin at whatever tempo you want. But more than that, I also have MP3s of um, playing fast, playing slow. I've got it panned left and right where you can mute mandolin or guitar. Um, so everything you need is over there at BanjoBenClark.com. Let's get started on this first finger style slow solo of Come Thou Fount before we dive into the fast stuff. Okay, we're gonna start out learning this first solo to Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And this is the slow guitar solo that um, we use our fingers. Of course, here in a little while we'll learn the uh, fast solo as well as the backup um, behind both of the mandolin solos. First thing we need to notice is we're not in standard tuning, we're in drop D tuning. So the only thing that's different from standard tuning is we're gonna take our low E string and tune it down to a D note so that it becomes an octave below our D string, okay? And as we get into, let's go ahead and throw the tab up. As we get into this first guitar solo, it picks up at the end of measure 19 uh, with those last two notes. 4-2 on the D string. And as we get into the solo measure 20, we're playing a lot of notes with our right hand, but we need to make sure that we accentuate, that we accent and bring out the melody. Okay, so we need to pay attention to that. The melody is very clear in this solo, um, but it's, it's easy to let the other notes kind of drown it out. So we're gonna start there measure 20 after we've done those two little pickup notes. And we're gonna start just with, by pinching the D string and that low D string. You'll notice that I have all of your fingerings uh, beneath each one of the notes. And if there's a finger, a right hand fingering that works better for you, then you're welcome to do that. That's just the way that I do it. So we're gonna start off by a pinch and then just come up through this partial D chord that I'm making. You'll notice this D chord may not look like yours, but I've got my index finger on the second fret of the G string and my middle finger on the third fret of the B string. So I'm gonna pinch, come up through that and then pinch again the D and the B string. So very slowly, just those first three notes sound like this. Now, you'll notice what the melody does. Come the fount of. And that, so that D string is our melody. Well, the first time we play it, the beginning of measure 20, we're playing it with our index finger. So though we pick those two strings together, I wanna try to make that note come out a little bit. But then the next time, we're gonna play it with our thumb. And so we need to try to make that note louder that time. So listen. It'd be very easy to accentuate that B string there instead of the melody note. Then we're just gonna come back and that quick hammer on, on the D string, we're gonna do from the second to the fourth fret. And whenever we do that, we're going to just use our index finger to bar the second fret of the G string. We're going to need that for the next measure, okay? So very slowly, all of measure 20. At this point, I'm barring the D, the G, and the B string with my index finger. And that sets us up for measure 21, where we go to an A chord. And now their melody is right there still on the same D string that second fret and we're going to uh, do the same type of pattern then we're going to end 
here with the same hammer on. And then we can release. We're done with that. And at this point, we're going to reach out our uh, ring finger to the fifth fret of that low D string and pinch it together with our B string. Then we'll move down and pinch the fourth fret with the second fret of our G string. And then the last two notes in measure 22 are a stretch. I'm going to play the second fret down here with my index finger and then reach with my pinky and grab the fourth fret of the D string. And it sounds like this. And I'm going to try my best to let this ring out. So measure 22 together sounds like this. Oops. Now if that's too much of a reach for you, one thing that you can do instead of playing that low E string on the second fret or D string now, you can play an open A string. So it would sound like this. And that's fine. And then we're gonna end um, that first little phrase on the first beat of measure 23. And then we're just gonna play some filler notes. And then we go back into our melody, just like we did to start the song. Okay. So I'm gonna try to bring those notes out again. When we get to measure 24, we've already seen that um, back in measure 20, as well as measure 25, we've already seen that. But when we get to measure 26, we're gonna do the same type of walk down that we did before, the same type of notes, but we're gonna get them in different places. This time we're gonna increase the harmony a little bit. So we're still gonna grab that fifth fret with our ring finger. 